evening and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Bladecast Masters Tournament. This is uh, hosted by Bladecast TV in partnership with Tailworlds Entertainment. We are here today to enjoy Rising Rivals versus Serious Warband. This is a second stream for Bladecast Masters Tournament. The first map will be Reverend Village. I have with me the wonderful Gibby, who's a very, very good player. Almost won the Battle of Bucharest last year. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> oh man, it was it was it was a phenomenal phenomenal. Don't, don't remind me, please. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, he's he's here, and I will let him begin on talking about the team. So, Gibby, do tell me what what's special about Rising Rivals, or what's so special about Sirius, and why have they come to this qualifier stage? Well, both of these teams are probably like throughout the whole the whole qualifiers. If you look at all these teams, these teams are probably two of the best ones. It's a bit unfortunate that they've ended up in the same group as each other, but it should give us a really good match. Um, it should give us a more interesting, I suppose, um, finals where, where we will have a mix. Um, or are you thinking that if one of these guys wins, they'll, they'll sweep the finals? <laughs> I, think, I think this is a good chance for them to show like how well they will do against other good teams, because both of them have had... Well, Serious Warbands formed just for this tournament, and Rising Rivals has had a big roster change from, from the past. So I think it'll be interesting to see how well they can do against another another good team. Like yeah, it could yeah, set yeah. up if they're gonna have success later on, or if they're just gonna flop. It's because uh, I recognise a lot of the names, but again, Rising Rivals is a name I'm familiar with. Um, but I haven't, uh, it, it, as you say, it's a roster change. So I'm I'm surprised to see so many um, new new faces uh, on the serious side. Yeah, serious is not something I recognise, but the, the player list is yeah, is it's a very good roster. Yeah. All right, I'm really really looking forward to this this match. So we have uh, Reverend Village, and um, I believe. In a, in a moment, there will be a map intro to set us all off, um, which will be lovely and ready to uh, start in Reverend. So it's Nords and Rodox, isn't it? I think Nords definitely should uh, should take this. I don't. I've seen some good open map product performances as well, but I don't know how that's going to go. Do as a, as a cavalry player, I, I like. Um, uh, Rodox is is better unless of course you like the javelins. Uh, I'm I'm terrible with javelins, but again I'm <laughs> way way over my head when it comes to um, playing. Uh, I haven't played properly for for at least a year, and, and everyone's gotten far better than I am, or or even ever was. I think um, <laughs> I, I I did enjoy my time when I I had it, but now I just love love being able to stream for everyone and um, and and watch some really incredible players. It, it's it's amazing seeing how far people have come. Um, you know, we've got we've got familiar names, but there are but there are there are, there are new ones as well. Yeah, that you wouldn't like Asediado. You know, he's Asediado. I was going to well. mention mention him because uh, I remember seeing him in uh, lo loads of uh, clans, and he he's risen through the ranks. Um, you know, I I remember playing with him, and at the time, um, you know, I I was able to to beat him, but I think he would probably absolutely stomp me now. Absolutely stomped me, hands down. Um, His ping isn't uh, brilliant, actually. I don't know if it's normally like that, or uh, or if it's gone worse. But I don't know like it's... Black Devil as well. I think is Red War's brother. I think that's what who he is. So oh, I'm not okay. sure what's going on with him being there. Probably got in because because of, <laughs> of Red War. I don't know. I haven't seen Black Devil play in a while, so that will be interesting as well. Yeah, a bit of a uh, oh gosh. Some... Lovely, lovely uh, work. I, I'm just watching the the intro as everyone's warming up and everyone's looking looking to be playing very well. There was a a nifty little axe dodge from Kieran there. Uh, so everyone everyone knows this game's now. It's been it's been what eight years since the release of Warband. Um, so everyone's been playing for such a long time, um, and it's it's just fascinating the the levels and how the clans have changed. And now we've got, as you say, the two best teams are two quite new ones, uh, apart from Rising Rivals. But again, that's still only a, a year or so. Um, so this, only one team will get through. What's the, are there any results from the other qualifiers at this point? Um, so there are, yeah, there've been plenty of other qualifier matches, but it, I don't think any any of the uh, the groups have seen which team will be going through. But well, it's one team goes through from each group, and obviously these two are in the same group, so. Only one of them can go through, and the other one is getting knocked out in the qualifiers. So it will be quite interesting to see. 
Uh, top, top Cat 21 says, eight years, uh, here's to the next 10 year wait for Bannerlord. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, uh, I think fans, uh, thankfully, we're, we're not that far off. Uh, but to be honest, uh, you know, even with the NVIDIA footage from uh, Gamescom uh, and, and various other things, you know, it's still, it still looks like there's, there's going to be more to come. And I, I, it will be really interesting to see how change up in Bannerlord. Um, and if we'll see the same names crop up, I, I would love to see some really new players jump onto the scene and, and grow. I, I um, think there definitely will be, you know, new players who are gonna who are gonna make it. I suppose it's just really a matter of time of how quickly they make it um, to the point where they can compete with teams like these. But it will be interesting if there's depending on how many new players get into it. Will it will need the community to support to to keep it going? People yeah. like Blake Cast and and actually to have um, Tail Worlds get actively involved is is phenomenal. Um, and and Tail Worlds are, are not our only sponsor. Now um, sponsors, here we go. We have our sponsors. We have twenty copies of Bannerlord from uh, Tail Worlds and ten B B Bannerlord T-shirts. Has given five tournament servers as well. Cheshire Cats Clan has given three tournament servers. Lord Metzger has given three tournament servers, and Oasis Hosting has given three tournament servers. So we, we've got a nice, nice little um, uh, group of people. Oasis Hosting. This is interesting. I haven't actually heard of them before, but uh, we are a fairly new startup with a mission to host high-quality, affordable game servers. But it's again, it's it's nice that we we get a mix of people from the community and from the outside who want to who want to contribute um, and build build and grow Warband because. It is a game. It, it, there's a reason it's had such a community for such a long time because it is good. It and is, it is it's very unique. Good. It you know it offers a lot that other games don't. And people but, do try. Yeah, and I think the thing that everyone wants is is for the scene to get bigger and you know events like these. There's not so much we can do with war bands, but events like these, you know, they really help sort of build the anticipation and ready for band lords so that when it does come out, we can do everything that we can to help it grow. Yeah, I mean Bucharest was special. I I was very very jealous of uh, uh, all the 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 two AE teams that went uh, as I was in Juggernauts, and um, we uh, I remember I was actually having a job interview that day, so I had to huddle up on my friend's laptop oh, on a stack <laughs> of books, and I played terribly. Uh, it was incredibly embarrassing. What's really nice is the stream records it beautifully. Um, like I was really <laughs> complimented by the streamer. They were saying, "Oh, Peter's doing well," and I was, <laughs> I was thinking, "How, how absolutely." Your, your laptop on your stack of books, thinking, "Am I doing well, really?" Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't. I can, I can assure you, I wasn't. I, I bumped into far <laughs> too many walls, and um, and I was so pleased that it was caught well on the stream. But here it is, the truth, my friends, the truth. Um, says the looks amazing tbf um, and he says the game that is uh, i hope he's he's talking about bannerlord um <laughs> the band is like... aging visually <laughs> i believe we are we are ready now for the map intro uh, yeah. for reverend village i i overestimated how how long five minutes was um <laughs> okay let's let's get started Right. There you have Reverend Village. I even learned something new. I didn't realize it had only been played for four years. You know, I thought it'd been going longer oh, than that. It seems like an ancient map, doesn't it? It really does. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know what I miss? And everyone's going to hate me for this. I miss Ruins. I love Ruins. <laughs> it was ruins? my map. I it was my nice map. Ruins. It's a bit too uh, a cow player, uh, or was, shall we say, was. I, I don't <laughs> think uh, I don't think anyone rates me and uh, even slightly these days. Um, <laughs> I'm probably not even on the books. Um, <laughs> when did you stop playing? I haven't seen you for years, to be honest. Um, I, one, I, I think Since I stopped I two years ago. Yeah, I stopped two years ago, and then Bucharest came up, and I, I crunched seven. You know, when it, 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 it got announced, and they were like, okay, so you've got to mm. form your team in four days. So I had to crunch all my four days worth of training to come out. It was like a four day boot camp. Um, so RR have actually made an early push here, right now. And they've 
reaping the rewards for it. A, a serious warband would have been my favourites, but RR have taken pretty convincing lead. I well, I say that, but it's just even now. My warband went dark for a minute. Fantastic! That was a that was an absolute whitewash. We have three left, uh, two left even. It's actually Karen completely turned, R the, turned around because RR took the early advantage and they took the first few kills. But Serious Warband had brought it back completely. Well, they, they, they oh oh, let's see. Can can Attila take on the entire of RR? We have oh no, even Serious even. But that was that was interesting. Interesting. I mean, is it is it going to be representative of the match? That's the question. Well, I think Rising Rivals are outdone in terms of individual players, but I think that push itself was very good. It, you know, they showed a lot of cohesion. They took two kills in this instantly. But I think just individually, they sort of got a bit careless because they got those kills, and then it just sort of fell apart. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you just look at that Nord roster and you just think, crikey, you know, like... Um, but again, the Rodox, the Rodox on the uh, RR side are just are, are also up there. So it's but, it's going to be really interesting. It's yeah. just it, you can't tell because even after this first round, where it was a wipeout, as you say, they played well, and if they if they take advantage of that, if they think, okay, we we're cohesive, and if they they continue that route, um, we've got some contestion on the church. Um, Is it very interesting to see OGL's legendary cavalry play going three one at the moment? Am I am um, interested by this because this is new to me. Um, since when has OGL been playing Cav? Please, please uh, indulge <laughs> I think, me. I think he just plays it on IG and because it looks like Serious Warband, the, the problem they have with their roster is actually that they've got four archers on. So they're sort of having to play their archers as other classes. So I think they've just put him as Cav and he's, he's proving that he deserves the spot as Cavalry here. It's almost halfway up, so we have... Well, it's Actually, it is now halfway up. The RR are not quite pushing yet. I mean, Harmon's uh, tw going all porcupine with his shield, um, and Black Devil and Puff the Dragon are, are holding that flag really solidly. But I think RR must must choose to push eventually. But how are they going to do it is another question. At the moment, Booker T is currently taking on TK Caesar. Um, I don't know how good Booker T's cab is. But no, we've that's got Slade. So that's Slade. I see. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's okay, so RR have tried to push the flag, but uh, uh, uneventfully, because Harmon's been pushed into a corner. So is Kieron. There's a massive flash of horsemen. Serious Azudado is down. TK T's Kaiser is down. Uh, Kragen is trying to take on Caesar, but Caesar's gone round. He's broken the shield of, um, of Booker, but that doesn't mean much at this point. TK, TK Caesar's going to uh, run away. We still have Kara left on the field. That triple kill from Puff as well. Just oh, this is still two though. versus four. This is still possible, especially since Caesar just lagged himself uh, out of reach of the other two, <laughs> and, uh, and that was taken. Uh, that was very, very clean from the Nords, to be honest. Um, they, they got that flag up. Yeah. I it, think it was, it was, it was a bit of indecisiveness the on the side of Rising Rivals. You saw that they were just standing there getting peppered with javelins and arrows and they weren't really doing anything. I think and eventually they did try to take the initiative and push forward, but I think they'd taken a bit too much damage over time by that point. Topcat21 says this uh, co-caster sounds like somebody would call their kid Joel, and I'm not sure who he's referring to. <laughs> um, I've um, I think never thought of Joel. I will. Um, you've never thought of Joel as a as a child's name. Child's name, but I will. I will tell my partner. And um, <laughs> Sega says OGL killing Azan as Cav. This is uh, I, that that is <laughs> that is something, isn't it? Um, that right. round wasn't quite so good for OGL, but um, still showing that. Well, he's just missed the couch there. That was very close, actually. He almost took oh, that. I I'm sorry, I missed that. that, that I, I noticed it on the map, actually. Um, we have the uh, yeah. push of the flag again from from the Nords. They're really, they're really. Hot. Look at the armor on the infantry too. That is yes. I, I think Rising Rivals must be feeling it right now. This is a two down, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything because they do have the chance to be Nords, but. I mean, we've got Puff the Dragon. He's he's been rising up over the years, and he's very very good. He's um, he's actually leading for Serious War Band as well at the moment. Oh, fantastic! Um, 
Ooh, that oh, is. Oh, that's oh, not, that's oh, not what they need when they push <laughs> her down. They lose the, they lose a heavy infantry. Uh, horse, horse duel has just happened. RKTK Caesar. It's just uh, Kragen is taken down on his horse. Been been of, OGL just hit Azan's horse, but OGL's down. Um, Kragen is down. So actually, no, this definitely is, not out of the round. This be quite the trade. Trade. Yeah, this is a good trade, actually, a, a fairly good trade. Um, though Harmon would have been very useful because he was an so infantry. Kieran and Azan are now pushed under the flag. Up. Just been backstabbed by Booker, or Slade even. Um, Winfred is, is just downed, absolutely. But bumped by Slade. Black Devil takes down. I think the armor is just too much for Rising Rivals at this point. Even with those couple of early kills, you know, they still. The, both of the serious infantry were up, and with that armor, they're just not going to go down, are they? Well, brutal way to go. When when you just can't tap them, can you? You just can't. You, you can hit them all the alike, but they just won't go down. Tap twice, and that's it. <laughs> it is. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than when you go in and you hit someone twice, and then they one hit you, and you're just you're just feeling like you know. Do we really need armor upgrades in this game? Look, there is something more frustrating, and it's uh, affording armor upgrades and forgetting to upgrade. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is the worst part. <laughs> yes, yes. Or, yeah. or, or when you you think you've got enough, and you pick a piece of armor, and then you actually didn't have enough, and you end yes, up with yeah. gold left over. Yeah. But that was actually very decisive. But again, it, it could be the Nord advantage. Um, but it depends. Um, yeah. You looked at those factions and you didn't even question it. There was there was no hesitation. It was it was not. <laughs> yeah, I think the infantry. I mean, look, Black Devil, Puff the Dragon, both at the top of the scoreboard. They use those Nord infantry very effectively. Percent. Rodox have good infantry too, but I just don't. Think yeah, I really I don't well. like Nord. I don't like Rodox. Mind you, I don't like Nord infantry either. Um, I, I, surprisingly, I really don't like axes. But again, I'm 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 a noob in comparison to everyone else. So. Um, it's it's of it's of no consequence what I think. Um, the uh, the Nord advantage was serious, but again, the, as you say, their infantry play was just stellar. Um, the way they held those flags and and forced RR on the back foot. They really they just yeah. held that front foot forward and they made RR have to make decisions and they, and they could used act the off of it. Um, really effectively, you know, that early headshot on Harmon by Black Devil, and in those other rounds, using it to keep the uh, Rodok infantry away. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, what surprises me these days in Warband is the level of 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 quality from Javs and um, <laughs> the, archers. Yeah, the, the jab uh, I'm hoping very, they're nerfed for that. <laughs> yeah, I think the, maybe the number in a pack is too much. I think, you know, I like it because it adds sort of another dynamic to infantry, but it is just a bit strong in Warband, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, perhaps... I don't know. Perhaps having a helmet and and making um, makes the the gl possibly a glancing shot or something. I don't know, but it, yeah. it just. I mean, in the hands of like capable uh, capable infantry who really know what they're doing with them, it can just be. Devastating. Yeah, it turns uh, it turns an infantry in a, into a potential archer, and yeah. uh, it's just it's just rough. That's what it is. It's just rough. <laughs> but that advantage now goes to uh, rising rivals. So. We'll see if they're able to use them to the same effect as uh, Serious War Band one. So, I hope so, because they haven't played terribly. They haven't been terrible, no, I haven't but... seen... I exactly, and, and they've been... Bad. But that that doesn't mean much, because again, as we say, they haven't played terribly, they've been playing well, it's just Serious have been playing better. Mm. Um, I mean, in that last round, like that early cavalry engagement, they were down, they'd lost, just lost an infantry, but their cavalry went straight in and picked one up in return. So, you know... It was really scrappy. They um, they were all bumping into each other, and OGL missed a couch. I mean, if he had got that couch, it would have yeah, been that would have incredible. Been, yeah. uh, devastating, and, and instead he got knocked off. Um, it, it was just messy. But, um... It happened, mm. and it was a, it was a good call. It just happened messily, um, but that was from both teams. Uh, I just think Sirius have definitely taken the the um, on, on this. Yeah, I mean, what we want is a good match, so we want exactly. we want this to the advantages to be reversed, and we want uh, rising rivals to bring this back now with a three zero of their own. The rising rivals, that is what we want. <laughs> to show to make to live up to their reputation, live up to their name. <laughs>
Are they, are they using three infantry? It looks like they are. Infantry for which is Attila, Harmon, Kara, and Kiron. Um, we have Winfried and Dirty Venom and Azan as cavalry, so that only leaves uh, one, one archer. Yeah, one archer. Um, Serious Warband used two, but uh, I think I think it, it couldn't be good. It can be good if they use the initiative properly. You know, if if like if they stand around, maybe if they get some crossfires with the jabs and then they push in strong, it, three infantry can definitely work. On uh, the RR side, we have Asadiado, we have Booker T, which is Slade, we have Kragen. Is it Kragen or Kragen? I'm I think it's. Sure. I, I call him Kragen, but I could be. Um, we have LaRue as the archer, Black Devil, Puff the Dragon, OGL is infantry. Oh, OGL's a crossbow, he's been taken down by Kiron. And they are using so those jabs as well. Jab I, w I always want to call them javelries for some reason. Um, jabs are being used effectively, but um, Sirius Kragen took down uh, Azan. Winfried is, is also dismounted. Oh, should definitely have this one, I think. There's only, you know, they've, they've taken the infantry down. Uh, Winfried is down, however, so their cavalry is down. Cavalry left. He's taken down Kragen, who, and Booker's just been downed. He's finished off with a double team on that, and Harmon's got, just got himself a double kill, and well deserved for that as they took the flag. Yeah, um, just an thank, archer thank and a uh, cavalry left now. I don't think they can do it. Display of more <laughs> superiority. Um, but it, it, again, do you know this? And you know that the Nords are going to be superior on the map. And, and actually, I've always thought that the factions were fairly balanced, but uh, I'm, I'm If you I'm have the players who can use those jabs, I mean, look at the infantry. Kara, 4-0. You know, Kiran, 1-0. Five out of eight kills have gone to the infantry. And that's not something you normally expect to see on an open map, but with the Nord infantry and the javelins, they're just too much. And and these days, we're expecting such high level play that uh, mm. it will be interesting to see how they balance the factions in the in the later games. Because uh, uh, as players, y you you can predict who's going to win basically often on the factions. But of course, it can often change around. But yeah. that's more a mistake on the other team. You know, it's if if Rodox win. Reverend Village against Nords. Chances are the Rodox were making a, a you know, the, the the Nords were just playing it bad. Mm. Um, uh, and, well, and there were, you know, some, really some particular individual performances or things which really turned it. But the um, Serious Warband have actually changed their setup. They had three crossbows, I think, before. GL's gone as infantry now. Yeah, they switched their GL to infantry. Looks like he's their spearman as well. Um, which <laughs> is, this, allowed... is this a thing? I think they're hoping to fight toe to toe with the Nord Infantry 3v3. Oh, OGL just took down TK Caesar but got taken down himself. That's a cav down for um, uh, RR and, and TK is, is a good trade as, as OGL just puts in the, in the chat. Um, Dirty Venom takes down Sirius Black Devil. Booker takes down Attila, so they, they've lost a, lost an archer, I believe. Oh, no, he was, a, he was an infantry, wasn't it? Uh, T is taken and down. All so this of the uh, four band infantry are down and. Now the the uh, the rising rivals infantry are free to just pepper those horses with jabs. They still have Larue. Um, they still Larue's have always either. So they, I mean, if they kite well with this, they can definitely make something happen. The Ardo would die though, and Kiron's the same. You know, it, it won't take much to throw them off. But Kiron is is busy taking on Larue. He's yes, there we go. We got Larue down, <laughs> and we're gonna see a, a a rise in the rivals. Yeah, yeah, they. The last of Kragen. Looks like all of these infantry are. I um, don't oh know, Kiron's gone down, but the other infantry are up, so they're going to be absolutely tanked uh, next round. Harmon and Kara, the two infantry, six and five kills. It's beautiful. Really proving the infantry work on Nord. You know, you can see them with that armor there now. That is going to be a real pain for a serious warman. It shows that uh, Rising Rivals just. They were playing fine last round. Mm. They just were at that disadvantage, um, and now they've got that uh, advantage. Now they're armored up. You've got Kara and Harmon both in full chainmail gear. Uh, Attila and and uh, Kiron are well. Attila's back pretty much to neutral gear, but Kiron's a little bit upgraded. He's got yeah, a helmet got a nice to defend helmet. against Larue. Larue's um, battering. And the cavalry aren't. Uh, you know, they've got their leather armor. They're not. Two of them have got leather armor, I think, so they're not all in tunics anymore, so they can do quite a bit with that. Definitely oh, helps sure. when you're not riding around in pajamas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nords, they, they, are, they are pajamas, but uh, it's always surprising how much Nords can take, even then. Yeah. Uh, 
They do I normally take two hits to go down the cavalry, don't they? I ignore the cavalry though, just because they have a light lance, and the light lance is always my favourite. Of Sirius have taken that flag without question. Rising Rivals were hoping for another flag spawn. Um, so this is actually going to be interesting because Sirius pretty much always had the flag last round. Mm. Um, and when they had the flag, they tended to win. Kragen is going in for a couch. This could be a mistake, but he's pulled out. I think he, he just wanted to threaten. Um, they Azam, said but here, but, um, Rising Rivals have actually sent an archer around to the graveyard, which is forcing Sirius Warband to push. So, and this DK's is going uh, Keanu and Attila are facing off each other around the um, Keanu's with the crossbow. Takes down OGL. This is, a, this is an incredible bite for. Uh, Those infantry from Rising Rivals just aren't going down. You can see they're just. It's the two male ones that are still up. Just still going. We're back on four, four versus four versus six. Ash of cavalry. Winfred took a took a hit. Um, but I, yeah, I and think then the javelin from, from is... yeah. It was a it was a friendly javel javelin coming in. The Ruse is fleeing, but he's being hunted down here. Just, <laughs> but that's good. It's long as he's being cut off from the crossbow. Keanu is still busy with his crossbow though, and he's trying to take on Harmon to, to free up Larue. Harmon needs to back away because he's he's caught in yeah. a crossfire between two excellent archers, and they can always take the flag. The cavalry are going to uh, go and try, but oh, yeah, they can't. That's... They cannot run in care, uh, carelessly here because it's two v four. If they if these both these cavalry go down, it's a two v two on flag. 2v3 oh. now. Oh, TK Caesar taken down by Keanu. Keanu, I, I don't know what Keanu was I don't, I don't no. yeah, he can't. He's just trying to stop them winning on flag. There's only a few seconds left in the round. I think it's, it's too much. Five seconds, three people. With with the amount of kills done then, that was another another whitewash from Nords. Mm. Um, and you can see the infantry 9050 just devastating. When you've got capable infantry there who really know what they're doing, it's just... Yeah, and and the teamwork, the teamwork, as you said from the beginning, the teamwork of Rising Rivals was was really nice in these rounds. Um, they they took it well, and Sirius did try their best. They did a good job. Uh, they almost pulled that one totally back. Um, I I I think actually they, I I don't know because the players are all so good at this level that it's hard to clutch one v four. But it it. You know it can happen, and I think I think Keanu just went to waste. Yeah, there. he had Larue just a few more shots, and but you know even even if they'd landed all those shots, there were only twenty or so seconds left. There really wasn't much they could do in that round. Me Menethil point likes to point out Kara's nine uh, kills, zero deaths. So that that was very very impressive. Um, mm. As a, as an infantry on an open map, you know when someone does that. You, you just think, you know, infantry open map, it must be like a really good individual performance to, to get nine kills like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had um, well, Warhammer shocked at OGL being infantry, but OGL's also <laughs> been cavalry, so uh, I don't know. He's really showing <laughs> it's... Uh, his, his multi class <laughs> capabilities. Uh, we got Tardet, he says, quite a nice use of the jabs from RR. I think we saw nice use of jabs from both teams. But mm. uh, to be honest, there were some good good pot shots from Sirius in the first rounds. But I, I think across the board, Rising Rivals used some lovely jabs. Yeah, those, uh, you know, just keeping the cavalry away with them, just getting those ranged kills with them. It really just sort of forced Sirius Warband to play in a, in a more defensive way than they wanted. I think they wanted those fights, but their players just being kept away by the javelins. Also points out here he'd like to say that Spearman Kieran did a good job and kept his inf mates alive. Um, yeah, you don't really notice uh, the Spearman, do you? I I love being a Spearman. I didn't realize that it's now a uh, is it a bit of a meta now? Because <laughs> yeah, normally you have sort of a Spearman with your with your infantry squad. Yeah, I've never heard this one before. Is this quite a new thing? Um, I think some teams were doing it. I know that the only team I played in. We have one. We have one in FT. That was the, probably the first team I played in where we had a dedicated one. We didn't have one in AE, um, but it just sort of, yeah. It's, I think it is definitely a thing which teams all do. Now. Impressive. I mean, it, it's a strange weapon because it it seems uh, like a, a spear and a shield. Is actually can be quite competent in the right hands, and I I love being because you a can shield. you can bring in the those because the other infantry aren't expecting it, are they? If they're fighting one infantry, and then you can just stab in from the side and stun them with that, and then your infantry can chain hit. 
you can keep the cav away as well. So you, you're actually not useless in the melee fight either. Not useless at all, especially when you, you've got we've got Swardians, um, I believe the it's Swardian bikes. versus Saranid, and this will be fantastic. Um, this like on um, on Sandibush, this should be good. Well, who do you think has the advantage? Uh, I mean, being being the the low class warband player, <laughs> I am, I would say uh, Swardia. But uh, what what would you I say? I think it would depend. Both both of them can have an advantage. It depends really on how they play it. So the Swadians are going to want to keep the the open spaces using those long pike cav, and um, if they can get the fight in the open and those cavalry coming at the right time, there's going to be nothing the Saren can do. But at the same time, the Saranids have those axes. Their axes actually do the most damage of any uh, one-handed weapon in the game. So really? if they can get those closed fights, yeah, they, their axes do more damage than the Nord axes. So if they can get their, like a closed fight in a really like a nice corner in the alley or something like that, and then they can just crunch the, the Swadians. But again, all pikes, all pikes, all pikes. It's, yeah, it's they all, are all pikes. so powerful. You can, I mean, if you're, you can get a one hit in melee with them sometimes as well. And, and the cavalry are not going to be able to get anywhere near if they've got someone capable using them. On uh, the stream says, "Great first map," which is which we both agree with. Uh, that it's going to be interesting because now now's the decider. We've had a, a draw on that one. Mm. Uh, he says, "Nord's OP. We should nerf them," which I think I think <laughs> we've all all agreed. But I think with Warband, I think it's not worth nerfing them at this point. It, yeah. I think Warband, we're, we're pretty much at the stage where there's no point. It is all about what's going to happen in Bannerlord. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, when the community comes in and starts learning the the, the ways of it all, I th it's been as as noticing how the spearmen have suddenly become a thing. Like changes everyone always i've heard so many times people going oh yeah you know when when this <laughs> when this meta comes in oh this is the final meta you know yeah, what yeah. i mean people people it, decide I mean, it does always the change you know there was a time when we had the um six cavalry and two archers on open maps with the dragoons you know on the saddle horses who would dismount on flag i don't know if you were playing then <laughs> yeah yeah i was that, that was, was you know that was in for like a year and a bit maybe two and then that was gone it is interesting to see how, you know, some things come in and go out, even now, when the game is at such a late stage. Exactly, and we see the rise of things again. I, I, the, the, um, you know, the, the traditional setups kept, kept coming back and then dropping out again for a while. Yeah. And I think it was, it was often when the surprise would come in. I remember when the whole cav rush phase, phase was going in, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was it AE that started that? I, I, think it might I, have... I do remember uh, playing a few cav rushes at, uh, Definitely the best rounds when you're playing infantry on an open map and you're just sort of, you know, you're just walking around complaining about all these cavalry coming in and bumping you down and then suddenly you're told to go cav yourself and you just charge in. Definitely yes, the yes. best moments of the open map. <laughs> um, I mean, I've, I, I haven't been in that many uh, top teams doing too many competitions, but I, I've even I've had the, the pleasure of doing it. <laughs> cav rush, yeah, it's very, very cool. Cav rush. I, I've I've enjoyed the teams I've been with. I, I really a highlight was was being part of CCC because I, I remember when we had this this lovely match against Wolfpack and um, and everyone bet against us on that betting corner. Everyone was like, "Oh, CCC is going to get wrecked," and I think we beat them twelve four. Um, and we had been training in secret for for a few. Months. And actually, we went from getting absolutely wiped out to to really. There is, really there is nothing with. better than just like having. A winning and a very very unexpected result my best would probably be when i was in one and we managed to beat freelancers it was just you know there's nothing better than when yeah, you're the clear been. underdog and then you finally managed to do it <laughs> i mean freelancers was was a good team and that that kind of i remember that came out of the blue when it first started um it's ready so we, we're gonna have um sorry yeah i was just saying i think it's getting live eve we are now live so we have uh, venom and kiaran and the rising rivals have already set up but they've been pushed immediately by sirius this is the moment of contention where everyone stands still for quite a while until it's, it's a bit like <laughs> that scene in lord of the rings uh the two towers where they're all looking at each other and then someone fires an arrow and hits someone yeah, in the, the first arrow it looks like larue's just sent one flying he's the first shooter there's no, there's no health lost on either side at this point. Um, Sirius are backing away, going for that flag. Puff the Dragon's raising the, the ladder, so they're going to take it from that ladder I'm, side. I'm quite interested that they didn't choose to use five infantry here. 
I know that they've got a lot of archers, but Larue is a very strong infantry as well, so they definitely could... Uh, I think they probably will. If they go down, I think they'll switch Larue to infantry and use five. So it looks like they're opting to try and get a crossfire set up. They sent Larue uh, into the graveyard to get that done. When Harmon's an infantry just with that one-shot crossbow, isn't he? Um, yeah, I, I believe it. Um, Azan's coming in. Uh, the, the cavalry are right in well there. there. I mean, it was very a, good entrance. The cavalry almost got stuck, but actually, the infantry took advantage of that cavalry rush and and brutalized. Harmon accidentally hit Kara and gets hit himself by Black Devil. The infantry of Sirius have taken the infantry down. I think this is a mistake for, for RR to follow. Yeah, I don't think they should be going down. Though. Their cavalry are out. They they they're gonna get. It's still a massive task for Sirius oh! to win this. But... Attila just took down uh, Red War Puff Puff, which could be the change of pace. Keanu is now the last one. And LaRue is kind of hiding somewhere. He's, off, he's off in the graveyard. He was shooting from over there, but as I say, I just don't think the fights last long enough on Sand because he crashed. <laughs> I think he tabbed out. I think, I, you know, think... I think he was waiting. He no, he just given up. Just I'm not sure what he was doing, but... I just think the fights don't last long enough for the two archers to do so much work on it. I definitely prefer five infantry as a sandy stress. Just get in there and have a brawl. Right. We have... So, uh, Senate. Apparently Senate's barely playing. I don't know what's, what's happening on the chat at the moment. People are talking about Senate. But we're, we're back in the game now. LaRue um, actually has switched, as I said he might, to infantry. See, there you go, Gibby. This is this is the experience, man. <laughs> talking. So they're um, they're using five infantry now, which I think I think is better because against the the Swedians, you know, when you've got two archers, it means you're sort of wanting to play in a more open with the archers. But that's just not what they need against the uh, the cavalry. They just need to get down. in there and have a big big fight with the infantry and keep the cavalry out of it. It's, it's like they all, all, all in this all in the corridor. The cavalry have rushed in, which I think with the whole all pike situation is, is not. I don't really know what's going on. It's it's an I don't think they should have sent all of their infantry up there, but and um, it's even. It's, well, what's happening? What's it's definitely happening? back and forth. No, it's, it's just Kara's a complete got a mess. Kill. Puff's got a double kill, so it's been double kills on both teams. Harmon's now uh, holding up the ladder. Kieran finishes off. Oh my God! What's going on? It's a three v three. It's just. Three versus three. Um, that was just a mess. To individuals, yeah, it yeah. came down to individuals. Everyone was playing for themselves. Uh, Puff is now. To oh, fantastic from Venom! Ooh. Venom has just taken that round. Well done, Venom. He's got a full round. Ruin red cavalry. Not too easy people to kill as a dismounted cavalry. <laughs> Kragen is it's one v two. He's Kragen's a very good infantry, so he can still but definitely do that. So are Harmon and, and, and Venom and. and they just need to play it smart and use the fact that they've got two players. Use the stun from the old bike there. That would be. Uh, but but Harmon is he, he looks he's, like he's too someone scared. Who... He doesn't. Want to <laughs> he just plop him in the face. Be too much of uh, of servers where some you, you're in a two versus one and you want them to fight you, but for some reason one of them backs away and goes. Yeah, one of them keeping the distance and just. But serious world band actually in a lot of trouble because. If they lose 3-0 here, then they can't lose a round on Swedia. Pulls out for Kara. We have, uh, he says, playing very, very good. Um, have literally made their infantry to, to 1 HP. Because um, RR has great cav support, says Fieta. Um, and Men of Menethil's uh, congratulating RR's team play. I think there should be more armor on the side of RR, actually, but... A lot of them did die that round, so I suppose uh, not able it was to afford a it. I mean, it was beautiful to watch. It was it was utter chaos. <laughs> it was all down. Um, yeah, it was all down to individuals and that. I think the tactics. As soon as that push happened, the tactics were out the window, and it was just all down to the individual play. I was surprised by the 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 instant cavalry push. I don't think it was timed particularly well, mm. but that's just me. Um, yeah, I think. Seems... Sorry, Karen. Yeah, I just think that our, uh, they, they were sort of, all of the Serious Warband infantry, they all went up that uh, ladder area, which I don't think they should have done, onto the platform. I think they should have kept some on the ground, because they just sort of got surrounded, and then the RR uh, infantry started kiting them, and it was just too much, you know. Because then, then the cavalry were able to move around and do their work. Dirty Venom's got four kills as well, he's cavalry, so... 
making them work even on a closed map like Sandy. The Swadian advantage, and now now it'll be interesting to see because the the team play from Rising Rivals has been fantastic so mm. far. The the individual play from Sirius has been has been certainly good, but just the the. It's so impressive looking at these scores. We yeah. have um, Venom with a 4-0, Harmon with a 2-0, Kara with a 4-1, Tiller with a 2-1 as well. It's just some lovely play. Rising Rivals taking it carefully here. They're just sat back gently. It's, it's interesting actually that they want to fight uh, on this wall. I think they're, it's a bit difficult for their cavalry to come in if Sirius pushed them in. Oh, Puff taking a big hit and he's knocked down and he's finished off. That was exactly what they need, but now... Uh, Good lord, a dirty venom went down. Kieran's gone down. Oh, this turns on their heads. The infantry from Sirius Warband are doing the work that they needed to be before, but team kill that is that is not what they needed. That team kill is just Oh That went from from very good to very bad very quick. That, yeah, that was just in five in five seconds just it completely turned around. And that's actually quite unfortunate now because Sirius Warband are gonna be on life or death on the Swadian side. A single round and they're gonna be out. They they have shown with the with the Nord superiority that they were able mm. to just take it in. Um, if, but if again, you, you said Saranitsk. Yeah. But I mean, I'm surprised. I'm surprised actually because I think the Sirius Warband infantry are better. I just don't think that they were taking those fights where they needed them. They weren't sort of keeping the Swedian cavalry away as they as best as they could have done, and they just sort of let themselves get caught by the cavalry and some of their infantry were being outskilled by players that personally I wouldn't have put above them but clearly I've been underrating some of the RR infantry. <laughs> I've I've been impressed with Harmon. Whenever I've seen him play, he's been a long term player and, and he's always I think his team play's always been what I've noticed mm. to be quite good. Well Kara Kara has had a fantastic game. I mean was it was it him that was nine zero before and now he's six yeah, one yeah, yeah. on this map? No. Individually, I think he's had the biggest impact on the map. Oh Lord, Fiat Fiat is already um, taking out the chat here. He's uh, forgetting that they should compl be complimenting the Cav, uh, not just looking at the double kill in the bottom right. I'm sorry, <laughs> Fiat. I'm I'm sorry. Um, I, I thought I was complimenting the Cav. I think I think we have they been do. complimenting the Cav, but the Cav, yeah, I was, yeah, they were definitely making that work for the for the RR infantry. Creating just got stuck in a wall and you know when you get stuck in a wall what what can you do um i i do feel that they what, what's been interesting is that the cavalry have often pushed but then they seem to not be sure entirely what to do when they get pushed you know what i mean they're, 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 they're getting stuck in places um and they're not getting out of there quick enough and then yeah. they're getting so oftentimes you have a good push from cav and then it just gets a bit scrappy which is which is strange to see considering you know each each team has some really really good cavalry yeah. Uh, but again, maybe that's just because the infantry are good enough to stop them. Um, and and we, we all know how to move around cavalry these days. I mean, cavalry are not hard to dodge. Um, <laughs> yeah. But they were, you know, they were creating the spaces and the opportunities that they need. We'll just have to see if the, um, the serious warband cavalry can do the same. It's unfortunate. I think, I don't, were they playing Slade, Booker T as cavalry that, that uh, set? I think they were. I, I think so. I think It's unfortunate so. that because they've only got um, nine players here, I think they're having to use him as Cav because he's a very, very good infantry as well. Like having yeah, Slade in the, in the infantry fight would be a big like bonus to them. Fiesta also calls it serious warbands. Infantry are blind. I I didn't get that, um, <laughs> but then I think I think they Warhammer were. Says... Yeah, sorry, Karen. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think they had. Don't think they were using a spearman actually, and I think it showed in terms of. Um, how the fights went because that one where they pushed uh, that gate area sort of on the side the cavalry from uh, rising rivals was just able to get a bump stab down i think puff got bumped down immediately and just torn apart <laughs> they just can't do anything when there's cavalry come in if they don't have someone keeping them away uh warhammer claims the same he says if Sirius had a dedicated spearman they could have won that and and i think uh you you would agree uh, i ad admittedly i i haven't uh, joined in on this meta so um <laughs> I, I don't know what a match looks like with um with a new spearman but i'm beginning to see it and it's yeah it, i think it really did um cost serious war and that one where they pushed on that on that wall you saw they got those few kills at the start it looked like it was going really well but then as soon as that RR cavalry came in, they didn't have a spearman to stop them. The RR cavalry came in and just turned completely. Um, 
so we'll have to see. I mean, an all pike spearman is very powerful on Swadia. So I would definitely think that they should, if they're if they're analyzing internally why they were losing those rounds and they're thinking, all right, we need to get someone as a spearman. If they do that now, I definitely think they. But Warhammer also points out bamboo is insane to stop all pike cavern, and he's right. I mean, bamboo bamboo spears are useless against infantry, but, but my god, are they irritating against cavalry? And uh, uh, the the Saranids, as he said, if they had a spearman, especially a bamboo yeah. spearman. Uh, I mean, but you're, now, you're, when you're cavalry with a long all pike, you're thinking, I'm going to come in, I'm just going to destroy some people with this long all pike. There's nothing they can do, and then you get reared up by a bamboo spear. This ruins your day. As if in answer to our situation, we've got a Black Devil with his all pike. Keanu's got an all pike out, so we've got two spearmen on the. Um, I think I think Keanu is probably going to be the dedicated one. I think they want Black Devil in the fight. Yeah, he's switched weapon now. Uh, Larue is perched up on this little archway, ready, ready for a shot. The, sh the flag has landed in the middle of the square. You do not want to be in Larue's sights when he's got a crossbow on you. I know he prefers crossbows. I think. I th yeah, I believe so. I believe so. I don't. I don't want to be in anyone's sights. The archers are too good these days. It, 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 it's like, one is push immediately. Yeah. Very risky plays. If they lose this fight, it's all over. But so far, so far, it's going in their favour. They've taken down Kara, who's been the the main event. Uh, Azan's down. Um, Black Devil was taken down. He's also I'm definitely pulling ahead, but the round is. You know, there's still enough players up that uh, Rising Rivals could bring it back. He's doing a fantastic job holding off. Um, a good bump from Asadiado, and it was enough to take down Ke Kaiser, uh, Caesar, even. Um, we have Puff the Dragon, Kragen, and Asadiado. That was a clean sweep from Sirius. Not very fantastic. strong. Yeah. They fantastic switched fight. Slade to infantry, and I think that's made quite. I think he doesn't have so many kills, but I definitely noticed that he was doing the switch and getting damage done in the melee. And, and assisting at the end of the day is just as good as killing as, as Fieta likes yeah. to point out. Um, they've, they've swapped up, you know, they've got OGL on cavalry now instead. Um, Shema you know, is, is is head in hands with OGL cav. <laughs> I think it's it's definitely better than... I think Slade is a better cavalry than OGL, but they were wasting his infantry talent by using him as a cavalry. So I think it's better to put OGL on cav and get Slade in the melee, um, which they've done. A target says, according to their result, if a draw happens, Sirius makes it through because they have a better round difference. Um, so, yeah, so Rising Rivals are really not going to... If they lose two more rounds, they're going to uh, not make it through, so... Okay, that's going to that's gonna be really Definitely put the pressure on here, yeah. It's either or, or, isn't it? It's either it is, or. yeah. Whoever wins this will almost certainly go through. Rising, rising rivals. Despite the pressure, they're not, they're not deterred. They're gonna come out and meet a uh, serious warband early. They've got some javelins as well. I definitely like javelins on on the sirens. Sorry, I uh, t <laughs> Tardit says to read the whole thing. I I'm sorry, I've got to balance so many things, man. Like, have we got the calamity says there are no draws, so it will be Winterberg. Oh, uh, will be Winterberg. Winterberg. Yes, it will. It will. Uh, well, I, I've, got to, I've got to watch the game and read the chat, and I don't have two monitors, so I have my my new nice new uh, swanky nineteen twenty by ten eighty one hundred and forty four hertz curved monitor. I'm just going to put that out. There. I'm enjoying Has it. Has Larue um, done some damage to a killer? I think he's shot him. The dragon's taking on two. He's got the dedicated spearman on him. Uh, he's, he's played in this to melee too much. I think the switching the damage. But he's actually he's come up against Kara, who's just taken him down. 5v5, this could swing either way, but um, I think actually RR possibly have the advantage with their players. Um, They've still got that archer up top, which is going to be crucial. If they don't take that archer down. Harmon, Attila, look at that. Serious, come on! It's actually, oh, this could it's be actually it. been turned around. They, they pushed in carelessly and just that archer up the top with the Puma. This is a lovely fight. That was a, a good skills round, and I think there was a, some some mistakes mistakes moved. Mistakes, mistakes were made. And there's Asadiado going down. And rising rivals, have they made it through? Is this is this? Um, I think I'm not sure how many matches have been played, but these two teams are obviously the favourite from their group. So, rising rivals having just won the match there, I'm pretty sure it's going to be them going. So they'll probably be celebrating now. We'll see how seriously they take the run. 
Meta says, Peter Avastrat sounds like the guy commenting on the KSI versus, I don't know <laughs> what, what, which one that is versus. Um, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't been following, um, but uh, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but Serious Four Band, you know, they've got to be devastated with that round because they... They took it. They took the infantry fight, and then they just pushed in carelessly. With an, and rising rivals had a tiller up the top, free shooting. They just if they just taken their time, maybe put the ladder up and gone up carefully, they definitely could have won that round. We've but. still got another round for um, Sirius, just to show show us that um, that they can so they can that they can that they could have done it. That they definitely could have. Only one of them still got armor there. It's almost a compliment. He says it's almost a compliment. Um, but we also know that that means Fiatta did pay £7.50 to watch the um, Logan Paul fight. <laughs> uh, which, I, I'll be honest, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. I did No, I didn't. Uh... I, 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 it was... I watched... Uh, uh, who was it? KSI versus someone else. And I'll be honest, Joe, uh... Uh, the boxing was appalling. Um, <laughs> as, as somebody who's been doing it for five years, it, it was really... It was Amusing, like watching One Direction pick up. You're not watching it for the skill, are you? You're watching it just for the... No, no you're watching it for the people. It, it's yeah. interesting to see it's happening. It's a fight in the alleyway here. Sirius are backing straight off, letting Rising Rivals move into them. Because they, they they're going back. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're going back again. Bruce, Sirius the Rude takes out Winfred. The position where he's got... He's got... Oh. Just oh, mopping Sirius him up in the melee there. Sirius have absolutely ruined our role. This is revenge. This is like, this is the, you know, you backed us into a corner. We're going to lose, so we're going to fight. But it's very interesting because they did. They weren't doing this as the sound infantry, were they? This is happening. Swadian are definitely the weaker infantry side, I'd say. So it's very interesting that they're managing to win these melee fights as, as uh, Swadia, but they weren't doing it as sound. I don't know if they've just sort of, they're just sort of, they're at the point they've they've lost the match already, haven't they? So they might just be going in and attacking, <laughs> just thinking there's nothing more to lose. Let's just get in there. And sometimes actually that works better. Sometimes if you're thinking so much about strategy, you're sort of complicate your play. Sometimes just a simple push, just attack, is better. Oh yeah, I mean, because it, 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 especially if you've got good infantry, it's yeah. just lovely, lovely to if, see. If you complicate, if you complicate it, and you're sort of like telling your infantry what to do, and you're sort of you know, trying to keep them in certain places, you can complicate it more than it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I did a little bit of commanding, and I think that's one of the first things I learned was was that. Yeah, Man, if, but if you try to overcomplicate it, it just sometimes falls apart. Seriously, the flag has spawned flag. on the uh, on the. This is the first one of the first times they haven't really moved into that alleyway. I mean, they've pretty much done it every other round, and now Sirius has just taken that flag. This is this is their retaliation. They're saying, we can. I've actually seen some weapon swapping uh, <laughs> on the side of Sirius Warband. They're giving their axes to the people that they think are going to be doing the most damage. Ooh. All pike out, yeah, too. The RK, oh, oh, sorry, are pushing right up onto that balcony. Asadiado's trying to take them out, but he can't do anything up there. Booker takes down Kara, which is always a... a Kara's not been playing so well this last... This last, last set, he hasn't done um, as well, but, you know, it doesn't write off who's playing right so off well he's for the done. rest of the map. Oh, good. I, I, I always find in the, the last few rounds that I'm, I'm always quite tired, actually. I, I kind of lose, lose a bit of the will. Um, <laughs> drop. Seriously, man, take it, but... They have lost the match. It, over. It's too late for them, but they really, they showed us that they can still play. Um, yeah, they showed us definitely at the end there. Even after they'd lost that one round, they showed us that you know they could have won. It could it, on another day, it could have gone the other way. Diguez believes that playing OGL Cav was was the mistake there. Well, actually, they started winning once they um they switched him to Cav and put Slade as infantry. Is when they started yeah, winning. Yeah, yeah. So, just I with think, the players that they had, they just had to, you know, put them as whatever class they needed. That was a really good match. I think that was a really, really good match. It was um, very close, yeah, very good. Exactly, that, that made it exciting. I think it was interesting to see a draw in that first map. As you said, the Nord advantage was just so strong in Reverend Village. Um, it's a pick when you get Nords. I mean, 
maybe uh, as a community, maybe we just got to not choose them. But at the same time, <laughs> I don't but know. If, I, if the I, other team uses their tactics well and they sort of get some good individual performances, they can definitely do it. I think just today, um, neither of them managed to to do what they needed against Nords. They were just. I think if you drag the fight out against Nords, you really just yeah get like you get stuck under a hail of javelins, and there's just very little you can yeah. do. Uh, and you just get pushed away. I mean, the cavalry are always held off by javelins. Everyone's held off by javelins. It's just, it's not by any stretch of the measure. And and you just never know what to do because it's such a barrage. Yeah. Um, as, and and as a cavalry, when you're getting thrown at javelins, you just oh, start thinking so, about yourself. I've played cav a few times. I'm no great cavalry, but when I have played cav, when there's those three infantry throwing javs at you, you just don't want to go anywhere near it. I I find. One of the things I find about cavalry is that uh, when when dodging arrows and, and javelins, you have to dodge right every single time because the, the chances are with these days, with the level of play, they're not going to miss. Yeah. You know, the, the players you're playing against aren't going to miss. So it's up to you to be perfect with every single movement you do. And that's... I can tell you it's exhausting because you <laughs> never know where the next archer is going to be. He's going to be right around the corner. Um, yeah. Uh, Tardit says, uh, was a really enjoyable stream. Thanks for the casting, Gibby and Peter, and every, as well as everyone involved. Thank you very much, uh, Tardit. It's been a pleasure to ha have you, uh, in, and glad you've enjoyed. We had 61 viewers. Really nice. That's a, that's a good number. Go really a, you know, a qualifier match, not a final or anything. 61, that's good. That's really, really nice. Um, Fiatta 2 says, bring back Captain Lust. I, 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 okay. That's... Would love to have Captain Lust streaming again, actually. <laughs> really enjoyed his streams. He he was he was quite good. I, I didn't really watch enough of, of them, but I did watch the, the Bucharest one, which was which yeah. was always fun. But I, I really enjoy uh being a streamer here. And if I if I can get better, then I'm I'm really happy to carry on doing it. Um and we've got the finals match which uh which I'm really looking forward to. Thank you very uh, much, Gibby. And uh I'd like you. to just put out another Word for our sponsors, which was Tailworlds for giving 20 copies of Bannerlord, 10 per to the winning team and second place teams, has given 10 Tailworld Bannerlord t-shirts and posters to the winning team, and has given five tournament servers. We have Cheshire Cats Clans has given three tournament servers. Lord Metzger has given three tournament servers, and Oasis Hosting has given two tournament servers. We thank you all very much for watching. Um, and any, any last words for, from you, uh, Gibby? Just hoping that the next matches we stream are also this good. We don't want no, we don't want any whitewashes. We want close matches. It almost went to Winterberg. That would have been brilliant. Sad though that the the rising rivals and serious warband are two of the top teams in in the uh, competition, and to have them both fighting now um, will be interesting. And rising rivals really showed themselves to be a very strong uh, contender. So it will be good to see how the other ones, uh, how the other teams face up to that. Yeah, definitely be interesting to see how much further they can go in the tournament. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. And remember to uh, follow Bladecast for the next few days as we um, proceed into the finals. See you later.